Hi everyone, I want to talk to you a little bit about promises and how they can help you clean up your code and get rid of that nasty nightmare of a Christmas tree that we often end up with in nested callbacks in JavaScript. Now if you're not familiar with promises, don't worry too much. Um, it's a fairly simple concept and there's a lot of information out there. Um, the most common form of promises is this promise A spec, and you'll find that over here on wiki.commonjs.org. Uh, but the basic idea is that a promise can give us the ability to separate the callbacks from the code that actually need to call the callback. In other words, we can make a call to a function and then at a later point in time, we can have a callback registered for when that first function actually completes or resolves the promise. Now I know I'm buzzing over this really quickly, uh, but that's all right. You'll see how this works out here in a little bit. So I'm working on this little project called the Kendo UI Scratch Pad. It's a not so secret little awesome project uh, that I'm building for Kendo UI, of course. Uh, think JS Bin or JS Fiddle, only with Kendo UI specific features. And right now it doesn't do a whole lot other than allow you to type in some JavaScript and some HTML and then run it over here as well as save it. But behind the scenes, the Kendo UI Scratchpad is using the Icenium Everlive services from Telerik. And now Everlive is a cloud service that allows you to persist data. It's basically a backend as a service for you so that you don't have to write your own real web server with database interactivity and all that jazz. Within Everlive, it uses the promises specification for a whole lot of different things. It allows you to request information from the Everlive service and have that actually return either with a callback function or with a promise. And there's a whole bunch of information here that you can find on the promises specs, of course, and see an example of using promises here. Now behind the scenes, the JavaScript SDK for Everlive is using the tilde IO RSVP implementation of Promises. It's a pretty slick little implementation and I'm really happy to see Everlive using it. It's a, I really like using RSVP. All right, so getting to the code at hand, I have the ability to put in some JavaScript here. Let me just type something in for you real quick. And when I run this, of course you see bar show up because I'm using jQuery to replace the text. And when I save this, we see a message that it was saved and we see that it shows up in the URL with this nice big nasty URL that I'll be changing soon. And when I reload this page, we can see that it does load everything up and rerun it correctly. So looking behind the scenes, this load function here is the code that actually reaches out through Everlive in order to bring back the scratch pad and the specific revision that I'm working on. And this is only 30 lines of code, 29 lines of code, which really isn't that much, but it's becoming a bit of a nightmare already. I'm actually having a difficult time following this myself, and I'm the one that wrote it, so you know that's not a good sign. I really want to clean this up. And knowing that Everlive uses promises behind the scenes gives me the ability to clean this up really, really well. So I wanna walk through real quick how I'm gonna clean this up using promises. The first thing I need to do is recognize that there are multiple functions in here, which is really pretty obvious. I have callback functions nested in a couple of places. First of all, when I call the scratchpads.getById, that's gonna load my scratchpad from, from Everlive. Then when I call revisions.get and I pass in this query, there's another function there. So what I wanna start with is extracting these callback functions into other functions that can then be called from a higher level so that I can have cleaner code at a high level and then have individual functions that each do one simple thing instead of having all of this nested Christmas tree junk here. So what I'm gonna to do to start with is up here in my load function, I'm going to say this dot get scratch pad and I'm gonna pass in the ID. Now this get scratch pad function doesn't actually exist yet, so I need to go ahead and create that. So I'm gonna say function is going to accept an ID, and here I have my first extracted function, get scratch pad. So it's not gonna do a whole lot more than what the code is previously doing. I actually do need to add in this revision as well, otherwise I won't be able to have access to that. 
Now once I have this function defined, I need to start teasing apart the rest of the functions here. And in this case, what I really want to get rid of is all of this stuff that's inside of the get, because this is all dealing with creating the query in order to get the revisions. So I'm going to separate this code. I'm going to say here, close off this function, and then I'm going to name this one get revision. Now you notice that I haven't called get revision from inside of the get scratch pad. And there's a good reason for that. I really don't want to continue the nesting calls in here. If, if I just called this dot get revision, yeah, it's a little bit cleaner at this point, but it's not really going to serve the purpose that I want. It's not going to get rid of the, the nesting of function calls and create a higher level understanding the way I want. So what I'm going to do instead is take advantage of the way Everlive returns a promise from this getById function. So I'm going to say return scratchpads.getById. Up here in the load function then, I do have the call to this.getScratchpad, and that function now returns the promise, which means I can start putting in my then statements. And the then statements allows you to add a callback to a promise that gets fired whenever the promise that was returned from here is resolved. So that means I can add a reference to this.getRevision right here. And when the promise for this.getScratchpad is resolved, the this.getRevision function will then be called. Now I don't need this rev ID passed in here anymore because I'm no longer using that inside of the scratch pad. But I am actually going to need it inside of my get revision function here. You can see that I am using the revision down here. So what I'm going to do is pass this rev as the first parameter here. And I'm going to use another function that's built into the ECMAScript 5 standard, the, the JavaScript standard that most modern browsers are using. I'm going to call this.getRevision.bind and pass in this and the revision that I have. Now, if you're not familiar with the bind function, the bind function is a function that allows you to bind the context of a given function plus apply some default parameters to it, which is what I'm doing in this case. I recommend reading up on this bind function here. And do note that this bind function is not the same bind function that you'll find in Kendo UI's MVVM models. This is part of JavaScript and not part of uh, Kendo UI in this case. Now, I personally don't like seeing then get revision bind right here like this. So I'm going to extract this out into a variable called get revision equals, paste that in there and go ahead and put get revision in its place. All right, so my code's getting a little bit cleaner up here in this load function already, which is definitely a good thing. Now, within this get revision function, I still have one more nested callback in here. I have this revisions.get with another nested function. And the purpose of this function is to grab the HTML and JavaScript that I had loaded from the Everlive service and populate it into my Kendo UI view models so that it can return everything to the screen and run it the way you expect. So I'm going to do the same thing here where I'm going to end this call to revisions.get and I'm going to end the function here. And then I'm going to name this function. And in this case, I'll name it show scratch pad because that's what we're dealing with. And that's ultimately what this function does. All right. So now in the get revision function, I also need to return the revisions.get, which again returns a promise to us. So now I can do the same thing up above that I had done down below. I can say after the get revision is called, then this dot show scratch pad. Pass in the function reference. Now in this case, I don't really need to call a dot bind. The show scratch pad function just takes the data that came back from the query and it doesn't use anything additional. But this does look a little funny having one function as a variable and having another one as this dot. So I'm going to go ahead and do a bind on this one as well, just to make it a little more consistent. And I'm going to go ahead and pass show scratch pad in here. So now I have a call to get scratch pad passing in the ID, get revision using the revision ID and information that had been previously loaded here, and then show scratch pad after I get the revision.
Now down in the show scratch pad, I do have a little bit of code that no longer needs to be here, some extra junk from the nested callbacks, so I can clean that up. Also can format my get revision a little bit more. So let me go ahead and do all of that. And it looks like I have everything ready to go at this point. So if I look back at my load function now, the code up here is significantly cleaner than it was previously. There isn't a bunch of nested callbacks. I can see what's going on a little bit easier. Oh, and there's one more thing that I need to do. The scratch pads and revisions declaration that I had up here, that needs to be moved. So I'm gonna go ahead and move scratch pads down into get scratch pads, of course. I'm gonna move revisions down into get revisions. And it looks like everything is good to go at this point. I've significantly reduced the amount of code inside of the load function. I've split out the get scratch pad, the get revision, and the show scratch pad functions here. Let's save this, head back over to the browser. And when we reload this, we don't get anything. Let's see here. Hmm, ah, there's the problem. Spelled revision wrong right here when I did the bind. All right, so now that I've corrected that mistake, head back to my browser, and when I reload the page, everything does load correctly and it still runs. So the end result is that this load function is now significantly smaller, much easier to read, and takes advantage of an interesting programming style using promises to handle the asynchronous calls between all of these different functions to load up the data, process it, and eventually put it onto the screen. So let's take a look at the original, the first version of the code that I was originally running, and now the new version of the code that, I, that I'm running. Now you'll notice that I did add a few lines of code to this new version, but that's okay. The point of this was not to optimize the number of lines of code, it was to optimize each individual function and how it operates so that I can create more maintainable, easier to read code that in the long term is going to be far more beneficial to my application than reducing the number of lines of code. I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at promises and how we can use them inside of Everlive to increase the readability and maintainability of our code. Be sure to check out Icenium and the Everlive services, as well as Kendo UI when you have a chance, and watch the KendoUI.com blogs for more information about the Scratchpad that I will be releasing sometime later this year, I hope.